This is cute. This is cute. So cute. Oh my god, I've been so excited to speak to you. I'm such a fan, such a fan girl. Oh god. I am, I am. Like ever since um your song like literally popped up on TikTok, I was like, this shit slaps. <laughs> and I think it was like <laughs> I feel like it was on the way to becoming it, like it, it wasn't this massive viral thing yet it had like a couple hundred thousand likes i think so it was like doing well but it wasn't this big thing and i was like why isn't this like huge and then like the next day or whatever i saw it again and i was like oh shit it blew up so sick your freaking necklace it's the, so cool the chain thing that's so I dope. bike chain yeah. i call it my, my bike chain i'm so extra it's so sick <laughs> i want it's so sick I don't usually look this well put together. I just had to take a, like a picture for something. Usually I would literally be like, hello. <laughs> like, just oh, pulled yeah. out of bed. Oh, so yeah. when, I'm just gonna get like straight into it. I wanna ask some questions. I wanna be nosy AF. So how did you guys meet? Like what's the story? Like how long have you known each other? Obviously you guys are like really good friends. So I wanna know this, like, what's the story behind that, you know? <laughs> we grew up in the same like super small town in Illinois and Sven and I were like Phoebe friends and then we met Sammy when we were like 14 doing musical theater camp and then Sven and I were like you should have a sleepover with us and then we hung out and then we just like never stopped hanging out <laughs> and singing together. So, you've, yeah. so it's like you've known each other for years and years? Yeah, yeah. like yes. literally our whole lives. So oh, much time. I think it's nice because a lot of the time like groups like it's quite hard to find a group that hasn't been like put together. Yeah. Um, you no, know? and I think obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but like it's just nice because like the chemistry is obviously so real between you guys and like, you know, you've had all these like real experiences together and like to come up like with your best friends like must be such an amazing feeling. It's cute. It is a really cute. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe great because we've had like we have so many ugly pictures together from when we were like we fourteen. Really do. <laughs> yep. It's those cool. like those birthday posts you can like just oh, do, dirt, do dirt on each other absolutely <laughs> I I feel like you, they're not a real friend if they post a pretty picture on your birthday it has to be like disgusting i agree you know what <laughs> I'll, be an ugly picture. I'll agree to that i okay. remember a specific post where i only posted like seven bad pictures of you of me <laughs> <Yeah>. there are a lot <laughs> yeah that, that checks <laughs> how it should be it shouldn't be any other way I agree yeah. um, <laughs> and obviously so I looked you guys up on Spotify and obviously like F2020 is kind of like your kind of big song at the moment but like you've got a catalogue and like you've been doing this and like your plays are insane so it was nice to kind of like have a little have a little listen but with F2020 were you just like what was the sort of like writing process behind that because for me like writing is kind of the most important part of what I do like I don't play an instrument like I don't produce I know you Savannah you produced a track as well right yeah. the talent oh my god so <laughs> I literally like, I literally look at producers and I'm like what buttons are you pressing like what does that mean like I don't understand so how did what came first like did the idea come first did the beat come first were you just like I fucking hate my life at the moment like I need to fucking get it out like what was the kind of process because literally I was sitting on my couch and I was like this is the most whack ass year ever what what the fuck is this year and then I was like I need to vent somehow get it out somehow and the way that I do that is just like write a verse in a chorus so I got up on the mic and and like the verse in the chorus just kind of fell out because I was just whining and <laughs> complaining it's, it's just, it's the, easy to complain, you the, know? The key to music that's relatable, just complain. Just complain. <laughs> you just like grab a mic and just start complaining and it's like, it's a smash! <laughs> Literally. That's it, that's the formula. I, want, I just want to hear every single word said in your accent. It's so, you have such a good I'm voice. Like, fuck 2020, oh. uh, uh, got no money. <laughs> I I some shit I gotta fix. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> really, it does not sound as pretty in my accent. It's so funny because I sing with my accent all the time, so it's just a, it's just silly, really. Oh. <laughs> I won't slaughter it. I won't slaughter the song anymore. <laughs> um, and what I like, I feel like with that song, like everyone could just relate to it at that point. But what I also really liked was like you didn't, you guys, like you didn't just make it about your own personal problems and 
I saw that obviously on in like the TikTok like, like in the video, obviously you had like George Floyd and um, Breonna Taylor in the background, and I I always try and use my my platform to kind of spread awareness and like how important is it for you guys to use it to sort of send a message and spread awareness like what the fuck is going on around you i think i think it, like when you have a platform to begin with it's kind of your duty to educate the people that yeah that yeah, look up watching. to you yeah and like for you to like share your beliefs in a way that educates the people that are watching it. Yeah, kind of the gift of the internet is you're able to reach out into communities that you might not have in your real life. You know, just like, like you know, maybe your environment isn't the kind that, you know, promotes like tolerance and peace and you're able to sort of get outside of your own little bubble and, and educate yourself on, you know, different communities and I, I really think, especially, you know, as, as we keep going, as, as we all keep developing, it's getting much more um, accessible, you know, instead of like call out culture, we're trying to promote call in culture where it's like, hey, you said something like, you know, just so you know, like, this is hurtful because of this. And I just wanted to educate you. And instead of like, you know, ostracizing and uh, alienating, or like bringing it to the fold. Yeah, for sure. I think that's really great as well, because it's like, that's how people learn. And obviously, like, everyone is... I think that's the key is it's like rather some people just say nothing because like they're scared to make a mistake and if they make a mistake everyone's going to be on them and be like you're fucking this and you're cancelled blah, blah, blah. so I think it's good to just instead like we should educate people and yeah. then because that's how change happens you know and 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 I, I I remember I'm sure like you must get asked this a lot as well like a lot of people say to me like oh with your platform like do you feel a lot of pressure because um you know being an artist it's not just about the music anymore like you have to be spreading awareness and that must get quite a lot and I was like yeah I do feel the pressure but like I think that's a good thing like I want to feel pressured in a way where like of course it's one thing like obviously wanting to post and wanting to spread awareness but like I think it's good to put pressure onto these artists because if you have a platform whether how big or small it is there could be one person how I see it is like there could be one person or a few people that like in their household that their parents aren't talking about it like their friends aren't really talking about it so me or you could be the only people that they kind of look up to or or see that are talking about it and it just takes that one person to then have that conversation with someone else or start that conversation with their parents so I think it's all just like a little part part of the puzzle you know yeah Mm -hmm. have you ever had like a, a family member or like somebody that you know in real life be like Hmm, maybe you should like tone it down a little bit on your I mean, family wise like I'm very lucky that like they all seem to have their head screwed on like, even my grandma as well she's very like we yes. love a woke grandma. She, like, we love- hates Trump and like she's talking about Boris Johnson like oh she like shudders she's like 85 <laughs> and I'm like thank god like I have a woke grandma but obviously <laughs> just like friends of friends or if I'm in like a social circle and I'll hear certain things it's and it's hard like to, honestly to then be the one to kind of bring it up and be like that's not cool like can be quite you don't want to be that that person but then you're like nah fuck that because then nothing changes so you've got to pull people up on their shit sometimes yeah, yeah. And, and it can be done in a way where you're not like but just like hey do you know what like, you said I mean, that, yeah shame never made anybody want to grow so you got to be like i love you you're being a jerk right now you yeah. need to like yeah. I'm going to experience that as well. Like, what, what about you? I, I have, like, a relative text me and be like, like, you know, it's like, I love that you're, like, you know, we have different political beliefs. And she's like, I love that you're, you know, you know what you believe so strongly. But I think, you know, you're going to alienate some of your audience if you keep posting this stuff. And I was like, I don't think you understand how the internet works. <laughs> like, yeah. Somebody, like if somebody's like bigoted I don't want them to like my music it's not for them it's not theirs no. I think there's definitely such a thing as like you can definitely piss the right people off like mm-hmm. all the hate that I get is from like middle-aged like straight like fucking miserable white men and I'm like thank the lord Jesus <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. when you know you were doing something so right yeah yeah but I'm just like okay like you're not meant to get it and it's like especially they'll like comment under my pictures and they're just like slut and I'm like 
thank you. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm owning it. Like, try harder, honey. Like, calling me a slut is like not offensive. Like, yes. Like, yeah, seriously, we it. need to get more creative with insults. No, I does think, like, I'm a slut. Like, I'm a woman that owns my sexuality. Like, a tick. Yes, I am. <laughs> It's, oh my god. Oh, the internet. Oh, the internet. Ah, the internet. Internet is a crazy place. Obviously, like, the internet has played a fucking huge part in your success, like, so far. How, I, I mean, it's it's kind of so different to how things used to work before. How has that been? And did it, was it kind of like an overnight thing? And you were like, oh shit, like, suddenly we've got like all these new followers and all this new attention and like, and it's all kind of di digital because obviously it happened like over lockdown. So it must've been weird because usually when that happened, you'd be like, oh, we should put on a show now. We should do this, we should organize this. So how was it getting all this sudden like crazy attention during such a weird time? Mm. It's it, so weird. It's, I don't it's know. so weird. It might've been good for us in that way because it's kept us humble. humble. Like yeah. we, 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 we were getting new fans online, but like we're still the same people. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, no one's had any crazy ego problems yet. So. <laughs> we haven't got like an influx of cash and like, yeah. bought, like you know, out on clothes or anything. Like we all still wear the same thing like every day. Um, Literally. Yeah. So I mean, it it, it has been kind of cool that you know we kind of have gone on like. It's almost like a virtual radio tour. Yeah. Like all these places that we haven't been able to go, which I mean, it blows because I, I love traveling. I, yeah. Listen, I want to go to a place and do a thing anywhere so badly, <laughs> so freaking badly. But but it's been kind of cool that we've gotten to like meet and establish relationships with so many people mm -hmm. in like a very low pressure environment. You know, like you're not exhausted from like, you know, a week on the road and you know, yeah. like you're like, light in that time and then mm -hmm. so you get you kind of it, it is kind of nice like you get to meet people in the comfort of your own home <laughs> which is, in the, I know. <laughs> the problem is we all look like garbage when we do it but yeah it, no, it, you know you're glowing it's real she's it's nice real, you know what i mean i love this my hair's <laughs> like showed up my hair's so crispy but i'm flicking it <laughs> um i guess now when the world does open back up as well like you've sort of you'll be ready to go, won't you? Because it's like, you've had the success, but then you've also been given time to sort of just like perfect your craft like even more yeah. without like having to be so busy like doing everything else. So that's just going to be like mad because you're going to go out and be like, here we are, ready to go. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> it's so I weird that we use this time wisely. <laughs> it's like we have not played the song in front of an audience ever <laughs> ever imagine which... imagine right when you are able to play that song in front of however many fucking people everyone's screaming that hook like how crazy is that gonna be that's gonna be insane i'll be there i'll be like <laughs> <laughs> we'll be singing to you yeah we'll be singing. <sighs> i'll be like oh my god <laughs> um no honestly that's gonna be so like magical and amazing and when it happens i'll definitely be there honestly I love it. I love you guys. I think you're great. Nice. And I do. I do. Like your writing style is just so like up my alley. Like I love it. It's just so wow. like, it's so conversational and like just fucking real. And like, I, I love that. I literally love that. You need to write a song. To yeah, let's write. I'm down. Let's do a, let's do a Zoom session if we, if we need to. <laughs> the vibes are here. The vibes are good. Yeah, yeah. The, vibes, the vibes are here and until we can meet IRL. Yeah. Yeah. One day. The, and the whackest part of a Zoom, right, is, is like getting to know somebody. And I feel like we've established a rapport. Yeah, we've got it. We've We're got it down. good. I feel like not for years, mate. Not even for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been super, super cute. Oh, super cute. It's been, this, this has been a very cute time. Thoroughly enjoyable. This has I, this is This is stunning. It is stunning. This is Just stunning. Stunning. I'm feeling, I'm feeling this vibe. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh well i'm sure we'll chat and keep killing it bosses each and every one of you love you, you. <laughs> nice to meet you, nice to meet you. <laughs>